In this video, I will explain how to use Flurry's algorithm to find an Euler circuit in a graph. So let's start with a quick definition. An Euler circuit walks through a graph using every edge exactly once and by starting and ending at the same vertex. Now, an Euler circuit exists in a graph if all vertices in a graph have an even degree. So once we've identified that an Euler circuit exists in a graph, we can use something known as Flurry's algorithm to actually find an Euler circuit. Now, this algorithm uses the following four steps. Step one is pick any vertex. Step two is use an edge to travel to an adjacent vertex only if deleting that edge would not disconnect the graph. Step three is delete the edge that you just traveled across. And step four is we just repeat this process until the Euler circuit is complete. So let's check out an example of how to actually use Flurry's algorithm. Let's say we have this graph down here. It has six vertices, which I've labeled A through F. Now to determine if an Euler circuit even exists in this graph, we need to make sure that the degree of each vertex in the graph is an even number. So remember the degree of a vertex is just the number of edges that are connected to it. So if we consider vertex A, for example, we can see that there are one, two edges connected to vertex A. So vertex A has a degree of two. So let's write a little two right there. Then let's move on to vertex B. So we can see that there are one, two, three, four edges that are connected to vertex B. So vertex B has a degree of four. So we'll write a little four. Similarly, if we move down to vertex C right here, we can see that there are two edges connected to it. So it has a degree of two. For vertex D, we can see that there are one, two, three, four edges connected to it. So it has a degree of four. So let's write a little four. For vertex E, it has one, two edges connected to it. So let's write a little two. And for vertex F, there are one, two edges connected to it. So it has a degree of two. So we can see that for all of the vertices in this graph, they all have an even degree. So this means an Euler circuit must exist in this graph. In other words, if we start at some vertex, it's possible to walk through this graph using every edge only one time and end at the exact same vertex that we started at. So now what we can do is use Flurry's algorithm to actually find this Euler circuit. So step one of the algorithm says pick any vertex. So let's go ahead and pick vertex A to start with. Step two says use an edge to travel to an adjacent vertex only if deleting that edge would not disconnect the graph. So when we're at vertex A right here, it has two adjacent vertices, so B and C. So let's just pick one of these vertices to travel to. So let's just say we pick vertex B to travel to. If we go from A to B, and if we delete this edge that we just traveled across, would this disconnect the graph? Well, let's see what that would look like. So if we remove that edge that was right here, we can see that the graph is still connected. In other words, it's possible to go from any vertex to any other vertex just by traveling along a sequence of edges. So what that means is it's okay to travel from A to B to start our Euler circuit. So let's go ahead and write that down. So, so far our circuit is we started at A and then we went to B. So now we're at vertex B and we're just gonna repeat the same process. So we'll say, okay, which vertex do we want to travel to that is connected to B, that is adjacent to B? So again, we're just going to pick one and just see if we can travel to that vertex and delete the edge without disconnecting the graph. So let's say that we go to vertex E. If we travel across this edge, if we delete this edge, would that disconnect the graph? Well, here's what that would look like. So if we deleted that edge, we can see that the graph is still connected. So we can still get from any vertex to any other vertex just by traveling along edges. So that means it's okay to travel from B to E for this circuit. So let's write E for our next vertex in the circuit. And by the way, there's more than one Euler circuit that exists in this graph. Flurry's algorithm is just a way to find one potential Euler circuit. So now when we're at vertex E, there's only one adjacent vertex that we could actually travel to, that's D. It's the only one that is still adjacent to E. So if we travel from E to D, and if we delete this edge, would that disconnect the graph? Let's see what that would look like. So if we delete that edge, we can imagine that we can also just delete vertex E right here, since there are no edges that are connecting it to the graph anymore. So we can just ignore that vertex. We can see that the remaining graph is still connected. We can still get from any vertex to any other vertex by traveling along edges. So we'll go ahead and add vertex D that we just traveled to, to our circuit. Okay, now when we're at vertex D, we have a few different choices. We could travel to vertex B, F, or C. What we'll notice is that if we travel from vertex D to vertex C, if we delete this edge, here's what that would look like. So if we deleted this edge, we can see that this would produce a disconnected graph. In other words, there's no way to go from these vertices 
to these vertices by traveling along edges. So that means we cannot go from vertex D to vertex C as our next step in our Euler circuit. So instead, that means we have to either go to B or F. So let's choose B and see if that would work. So if we travel to B from D, if we delete this edge, here's what the graph would look like. So we can see if we deleted that edge, we would still have a connected graph. So that means it's okay to travel to B next. So we'll add B as the next step in our Euler circuit. Now once we're at vertex B, there's only one choice. We have to travel to vertex F right here. So let's go ahead and travel there, and if we delete this edge, we'll see that we'll still have a connected graph. So it's okay to travel to vertex F. So we'll add F as the next vertex in our circuit. And from vertex F, we can see there's only one vertex to travel to. That would be vertex D, so we'll add that to our list. And if we delete this edge, we can see that we'll still have a connected graph. So we'll go ahead and add vertex D as the next vertex in our Euler circuit. And from vertex D, there's only one vertex to travel to. That would be vertex C. And we can see that if we deleted this edge, we would still have a connected graph. So we'll go ahead and add vertex C as the next vertex in our Euler circuit. And then lastly, once we're at vertex C, we have to travel to vertex A. And recall that we started at vertex A. So that was our starting point. So we know that for an Euler circuit, we have to start and end at the same point. So in this case, our last vertex in our Euler circuit would just be A. So this is the sequence of vertices that composes our Euler circuit, or just one potential Euler circuit in the original graph that we had. And really quick, if we look at our original graph again, we can see that if we follow this circuit, we will start at vertex A, and we'll travel through every edge in the graph exactly once and end back at vertex A. So let's just take a look. We go A, B, E, to D, B, F, D, C and A. So we can see that when we follow that path, we used every edge in the graph exactly once, and we started at A, and we ended at A. So that's just a way to verify that we did indeed find an Euler circuit in this graph.